Well, good morning and welcome to In Church Melbourne at Home. I'm so glad that you can join us and I pray that today you are encouraged to go deeper in your walk with Jesus. For those of us who of you who found us for the first time online, there's nothing but a big welcome to you. Of course, today is Mother's Day and we honour and we celebrate those special women in our lives who mean so much to us. You know, I'm conscious that when the Apostle Paul wrote to his disciple Timothy in 2 Timothy 1.5, he said this, he said, I'm persuaded that the sincere faith that lived in your grandmother Lois and your mother Eunice also lives in in you. You know, there's something about the example and the influence of godly women on our lives. You know, whether they are our biological mothers or whether they are spiritual mothers and grandmothers who just uh, point the way to Jesus. You know, I, I thank God for those women in my own life who've pointed me to go deeper in my own walk. But I know for so many of you watching today, as I'm saying this, there are people that you can think of, women who might be members of your family or members of your circle who just have had a great influence on your life. Today, we want to honour, celebrate, give thanks for mums. And so we're going to pray and then we'll go from there. Father, We thank you that this is the day that you have made and we choose to rejoice and be glad in it. Lord, we thank you that it's Mother's Day and thank you for this reminder of the godly example that um, women can be in our life. Thank you for women of faith who, Lord, seek every day to honour you and to bless those around them. Father, today I pray for every mother who is watching and participating in Church Online, I pray that you would bless them. Lord, I pray for those women who um, wish they could have children but yet not have not been able to conceive. I pray you'd bless them in every way. And I pray for spiritual sons and daughters in their life. Lord, whether our relationship with our mums has been good or not so good, Lord, I pray today that Lord, nonetheless, we would give you thanks and we would honour those that we call mum. So, Lord, I, I pray that you would receive our worship today. I pray, Lord, that you would be glorified in everything that we do. And I pray in Jesus' name. And all God's people said, Amen. Well, let's stand in our lounge rooms or wherever you are watching and let's worship the Lord together. Let's stand to our feet and sing.
church, encourage and press in, enter in, set your eyes on him, and watch it break, watch something break over your life, you need breakthrough, press in.
Isn't it so good to worship and to declare the praises of him who is worthy of all our devotion? Well, it's Mother's Day and I know the beautiful kids of Inc. Melbourne, Imaginations Kids Melbourne, just want to bring you in greeting and here they are. <music> They melt my heart. I'm so grateful for all of the children who call In Church Melbourne home. Well, there's always a lot happening in the life of our church, and there's a few things that we just want to let you know. Hey, for all our youth, next Sunday, the 16th of May, is the final day for registrations for our 2021 encounter. T today, really, we want to encourage you, get those registrations in. You don't want to miss out on what God is going to do in your lives through this year's Youth Encounter. And we have some very special guests who will be joining the Youth Encounter. And I'm not going to say uh, anything. I'm going to let that, that be a surprise. But to everyone who's watching this today, you know, we don't want any youth to miss out on being able to go to Encounter because of finance. You know, we've tried to keep the, the cost as low as it possibly can be. If you would like to give a donation to help our youth get to Encounter, the details are there on the screen. Uh, please use those. We're really asking, uh, we, we need those donations in as soon as possible so I can then give subsidies to a number of the youth that are needing support. We're always needing at In Church Melbourne people to help in our serving teams. You know, Pastor Jack asked a great question earlier this year. He asked, are you a consumer Christian or are you a consumed Christian? And you know, sometimes with church, we can be just like a consumer. We passively attend, but don't contribute. Serving is a great way to contribute. So we are needing pretty much uh, people for every one of our teams, our, our setup teams, pack down team, welcome team. I know our youth are needing assistance, our kids teams needing assistance, our worship team. Oh my goodness, if you've got the ability to sing or play an instrument, I know we're needing that. But also one of the areas that we're particularly highlighting at the moment is driving the bus to and from church. This is to enable, because we set up and pack down, enabling all our equipment to get to church and then it be brought back to One Ashmi Court, Caroline Springs. If you can assist us with that, the details are on the screen, but Merv and Xavier would really like to hear from you. I'm really pleased to announce that on Sunday, the 30th of May, Pastor Melissa and I are launching what we're calling Faith Essentials. And really what we're doing, wanting to do over four weeks for 45 minutes a session, 8.50 for 9am start, going to 9.45 just before the morning service begins, is we are wanting to, I guess, look at some of the, the main things we believe as Christians, and then to think about that in the light of In Church Melbourne's vision, our DNA. If you would like to participate, it's totally free, but you do need to register. The details are in eNews. And by the way, if you've not signed up for eNews, just go to the website, click on the link that's there on the front page, fill in your details, that'll hit your box. The last thing that I just really want to plug this morning are connect groups. You know, there is no better way to grow in your faith 
than being in a weekly small group. We call them connect groups. These groups are designed to build friendship, uh, encourage and support one another, grow in your faith as you come around the word, perhaps study the word in a bit deeper way than what you get on a Sunday morning and pray together. And we've got groups for men, women, mixed. They meet throughout the week. If you're not in a connect group, you're missing out. So I want to encourage you, please join a connect group. Now, this morning, you know, we're giving thanks for mums, and that's a right thing to do. In fact, the Bible says to honour your father and your mother, that all may go well with you and you might live a long life. In fact, it's one of the commands that has a promise attached to it. You know, that sense of giving thanks is powerful. You know, my, my willingness to give thanks in all circumstances means I'm faith-filled and I'm God-focused. One of the ways we worship God, one of the ways we give thanks to him is through our tithes and offerings. I said it a few weeks ago, but our tithe is the first fruits. It's like the, the first 10% of our income. It belongs to God. Our offerings are those times when we feel a prompting of the Holy Spirit and we just want to give something extra to say to God, God, I I'm just trusting you with my future. I'm trusting you to open doors that no one can shut. Today, I want to invite you to give online. The details are on the screen. Please uh, fill those out. It's perfectly secure and safe for you to give online. And this is the way that In Church Melbourne is going to continue to grow as all of us worship God and honour him through our tithes and our offerings. And we're going to continue to see our church become all that God intends it to be. Well, we are going to worship again. And then Pastor Melissa, oh my goodness, I've had a little sneak preview of what she's going to be sharing. And you are going to be blessed. Get your faith stirred up. Lean in, let that good soil that's on, that is your heart, get ready to receive the seed of the word of God. But why don't you stand once more? Let's worship the Lord together. Why do we stand?
morning everyone on this Mother's Day. It's a great day to celebrate our mums and thank God for them. And before we come around the word, I just want to acknowledge that Mother's Day can be really tough for some people. You know, if, if you've lost your mum or maybe the relationship with your mum isn't so great. Or maybe you really want to be a mum and you haven't been able to yet. Well, anyone in that category, I just pray today that you really press into God, that you really feel his presence and this, this word just touches your heart and encourages you today. But before we get into the word, which is for everybody, I'm just going to pray. Lord Jesus, I thank you that you are with us. I thank you that you are our creator, our Lord and our saviour. Lord, as we get into the word today, I ask that it would fall on good soil, that every single person who's watching uh, or listening would be touched by it and changed. And I thank you, Lord, for these next few minutes. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, uh, my mum, she lives in Sydney, and I think she's the best mum in the world. And she's, you know, in her late 70s now and, and she's had an amazing life. She, she had four daughters and now she has 17 grandchildren and three great grandchildren. And it's just been uh, amazing as her daughter to, it's a privilege to have her as my mum. And as her daughter, she has taught me so many things over the years. Of course, mums love to teach their children things. That's part of our job. We teach our children things. And one of the things that my mum has always taught me, one of the probably most impacting things she taught me is that I need to always take responsibility for myself. She meant by that, that we can't control our circumstances always. We can't control other people, but we can control ourselves. We can control our reactions, we can control our actions, and we can allow Jesus to change us. Um, any any day of the week. Do you know one of uh, my mum's fa uh, favourite quotes, and she's got it on a poster in her house, is from the th famous theologian Charles Swindle, and it says this, the longer I live, the more I realise the impact of attitude on life. Attitude to me is more important than facts. It's more important than the past, education, money or circumstances, more than failures or successes, what other people think or say or do. It's more important than appearance, giftedness or skill. He said, I am convinced life is 10% what happens to me and 90% of how I react to it. And I tell you what, when you grasp a hold of that little message, it will, it will really help you every single day. You know, my mum also has a great faith in Jesus. And, you know, she's been through a few tough things in her life, but she also has taught me and still does that trusting Jesus is the most important thing. And it's actually also a choice, a choice that I make every day to trust him or not to trust him. And of course, it's the best choice you can make. And even now when I go to see her, and actually we were there uh, last weekend for a couple of days, even then, every time I visit, even though the house can be busy with nieces and nephews and uh, other family coming and going from her house, she always finds time to get me by myself and just ask me, how are you doing? How are you doing? And then when I answer, she always brings it back to an encouragement around how I need to trust Jesus and that he is with me. And I'm really grateful for that. So I thought today I'd start this message with that same question for you. I want to ask you, how are you? How are you and Jesus? How's your trust in Jesus going? Maybe you've never trusted Jesus before. Well, maybe today's the day to start, but maybe you've known Jesus for a long time, but today he wants to take you to a whole new level of trust in him. You know, I've been a Christian a long time. I gave my heart to the Lord when I was nine years old, and it's been a journey ever since. But I also know that even us Christians can really lose trust in Jesus. It can just happen subtly. It can just slip away or it can just be because we get lazy or just forget to trust him day to day. But I also know it's my responsibility to make that choice to trust him. It's my responsibility to uh, realize that my actions are on me, not on somebody else. You know, one of the most amazing stories in the Bible, I think it's the most amazing, there's a lot of amazing stories in the Bible, but this one I think is one of the most amazing, 
you find in Matthew chapter 14. Now, in this chapter, the first part of the chapter, Jesus has been preaching and he's been preaching to people on the hillside. And um, then, you know, it gets late in the day and then we read the amazing story of Jesus feeding the 5,000 with a few loaves and fish. And at the end of that day, it's getting towards nightfall and he sent, the Bible says that he sends the disciples in the boat across the lake. And then he also dismisses the crowd. And then after that, Jesus goes to a quiet place by himself to pray. And, you know, I'm sure he was tired. I'm sure, you know, he had a really big couple of days. But maybe he also was teaching us by doing that, that we should often go to a quiet place to pray. But then the story goes on that it was it came to the fourth watch of the night. I had to look that up. But the fourth watch of the night basically means near morning of the next day. And so it was near the morning of the next day and he decides to go find the disciples. Now, remember, they were in the boat heading out across the lake. And the Bible says that Jesus literally walks to the boat. He he just goes for a stroll across that lake towards the disciples. The Bible also says that the water was rough. There was a wind and, and it wasn't just a calm uh, lake at that time. Anyway, he's getting near the boat and the disciples see him and they freak out. You can just imagine early morning light. Maybe there's a little bit of light coming on the horizon, but it's really dark and a bit eerie. And they see a man coming to them on the water. Listen to Matthew 14, verse 27 and 28. But Jesus immediately said to them, so he's just coming up to the boat, take courage. It is I, don't be afraid. Lord, if it's you, Peter replied, tell me to come to you on the water. So Jesus first says, it's okay, guys, it's me. You know me, it's it's me, I'm coming to you. But Jesus, but Peter, he's not so sure. He's like, Hang on, is that you? If it's you, tell me to come. You see, but Peter had been on the boat all night. Um, maybe he was a bit, you know, sleepy, rubbing his eyes as, as, you know, the other guys yelled out that someone's coming towards them. You know, there's a storm, the boat's a bit rough. He, you know, it's, it's been, um, you know, he saw Jesus just yesterday. He saw Jesus uh, perform an amazing miracle. But just a few hours later, he's finding it hard to recognize him. Sometimes we're like that with Jesus. We've seen him do amazing things, but when he reaches out to us again, we don't recognize what he's trying to do. You've got to remember, Peter was comfortable in the boat. That was his turf. That's where he came from. That's where he worked every day before he followed Jesus. The, possibly the boat they were, were in were his boat. He was a fisherman. Uh, he knew where everything was on the boat. He knew the smells, the sounds. He was familiar with waves. He was probably familiar with storms. He was, you know, just comfortable in the boat. Why would you even think about getting out of the boat when this is where I am familiar? I want to challenge you with something today. What boat are you in today? What boat do you find yourself in? Where are you sort of, what place are you in right now? Maybe your boat consists of living up to other people's expectations. Maybe your boat is pride, like I can do things myself. I don't need Jesus, let alone anybody else. Maybe your boat is just, you just feel so broken all the time. You've been hard done by, people have done things to you and you're just kind of curled up in the back of the boat. Maybe you just don't even know where to go or what to do. Maybe life is just feeling just very humdrum and that's how you would describe your boat. Well, I've got a word for you today. I've got a word for you that could change your life. It's time to get out of your boat. It's time to get out of the boat that you're in. You know, like my mum said to me, only you are responsible for your actions. You are responsible to make good decisions and you can choose to trust Jesus right today. You know, at this point, Peter has said, if it's you, Lord, and then Jesus says that one word that changes everything. He says one word that is so powerful and that one word is come. He just says, come. To Peter 
And that's what Jesus is saying to you today. He's saying, come, come closer to me. Come trust me. Get out of your boat and come towards me. You know, well, you can say, well, I'm a Christian. I already trust Jesus. But even Peter knew Jesus. He knew him. He was with him. But that day, Jesus was calling him to a whole new level of trust. He wasn't going to let him stay in the boat, stay in the comfort zone. He was going to call him out to a whole new level of trust. He, he, he told him to get out of the boat. But Peter's like, well, it doesn't look very safe out there. There's wind, there's rain, there's, you know, it's, it's just not safe. Maybe you're feeling like that. You're like, but my circumstances, my family's still messed up. The dreams I have just haven't come to pass. And those people who hurt me, they will probably do it again. But Jesus, regardless, says, come. He says, get out of the boat and come towards me. So what does he mean by get out of the boat? It just means trust him. Trust him with your life. Trust him like you've never trusted him before. Trust him like your life depends upon it. Do you know, a few weeks ago, I had a whole new experience and that was I went skydiving with one of my daughters. My daughter Bethany wanted to do it for her birthday and I still don't quite understand how she convinced me to do it with her. But if you've ever been skydiving, you know it's pretty crazy stuff. It is a mental battle, let alone a physical one. You literally get strapped to a perfect stranger on your back. You, you've got these uh, harness on your body and then you go up in this tiny little plane and he literally at the right moment, they open the door and he kind of pushes you out and then you free fall for 45 seconds before the chute opens. Thankfully, the chute did open. I was very grateful for that. Skydiving is all about trust. It's all about trusting that that guy behind you knows what he's doing. Trusting Jesus isn't like skydiving because Jesus is not a stranger to us. Jesus is someone we know and we can get to know more and more. If you don't feel like you know him very well, you can get to know him today. You can get to know him for the first time and then keep getting to know him. We know from his word that he is fully trustworthy and that he has given us life and he wants to give us life abundant. I'm here to tell you today, for some people, you need to get out of the boat just like Peter did. Peter got out of the boat. And then what is so amazing is he walks on water. This isn't just a cute story in the Bible. This actually happened. It is true. It is in the Bible. It is true. Peter actually walked on water. Let me read it from verse 30. Then Peter got down out of the boat, walked on the water and came towards Jesus. But then listen what happens. But when he saw the wind, he was afraid and began to sink. He cried out, Lord, save me. Immediately, Jesus reached out his hand, caught it and said, you have little faith. Why did you doubt? And then they get into the boat. So Peter answers the call, come, and he gets out of the boat. But within minutes, he's doubting and he's falling down. And you could say, well, what if that happens when I start to trust Jesus and then something goes wrong? Well, did you notice in that verse, as soon as he started to sink, who was there to save him? It was Jesus. He never left him. He didn't say, I'll just go for a walk over there and I'll catch up with you later. No, he was right there with him. And as soon as he started to doubt, as soon as stuff happened, he grabbed his hand and pulled him up. It's not worth staying in the boat. Look at it for Peter, 12 men sweating all night. It would have been smelly and stinky, not that comfortable actually. It is worth getting out of the boat. Then you can do things and be the person God created you to be. Because when we're out of the boat, we're trusting Jesus. We're living life the way we were created to live. Day by day, hour by hour, reaction by reaction and action by action. We can choose in a whole lot of small decisions just to say, Jesus, what would you have me do here? Jesus, please help me with this. Jesus, how do you want me to do this? Or please heal this thing. There's oh, any number of things that he wants you to trust him in. 
So I want to give you three practical ways of how to grow in your trust of Jesus, because of course we want to make this practical because this is life we're talking about. The first one is, I'm just going to pick up my Bible. We need to read our Bibles. And I'm just not talking about a quick verse here or there. We need to get into them. We need to read them and study them. And then we not only need to read them. The second thing we need to do is ask the Holy Spirit to reveal the truths in them to us. You know, you can read something and not really get it just sort of floats away. But when you pray before you read Holy Spirit, as I read today, would you reveal your truth to me? He will every single time. You'll be amazed at what will happen. And of course, the third thing is we need to apply it. We need to read it, believe it, have it revealed to us by Holy Spirit, and then apply it to our lives. I'm going to say it again. We need to read it, ask Holy Spirit to reveal it to us, and then we need to apply it to our lives. I want to give you some examples for this, and you can, I'm sure, come up with your own examples. So for example, if my boat that I'm in I'm in an unhappy relationship. Maybe my spouse and I aren't getting on. Maybe every day there's conflict and I really feel trapped in my boat. And remember, I know I can't change the other person. I can't change that person, my spouse, what he's doing to me. But I know I can choose to let the word of God and the Holy Spirit change me. I can choose to trust God in this situation. So I take a scripture, something maybe like 1 Corinthians 13, uh, verse 4 to 6, that, which says, Love is patient, love is kind, does not envy, does not boast, it's not proud, does not dishonor others, is not self-seeking, is not easily angered, and it keeps no record of wrongs. I could go through each of those scriptures and ask the Holy Spirit, sorry, each of those points about what love is and ask the Holy Spirit to show me to, how to apply it in my marriage. Holy Spirit, help me to be patient. Holy Spirit, please help me not to bring up everything he's ever done to me in today's argument because love keeps no record of wrongs. Holy Spirit, help me to honour him. And I tell you what, Holy Spirit loves those prayers. When we take the word of God, we ask the Holy Spirit to reveal it to its truths to us and then we apply it. That just might change your marriage. Or maybe another example, maybe your boat is anxiety. Maybe you just really spend most of your wife life worrying about what's going to come or what might happen today or tomorrow or next week. You could take a scripture like Matthew chapter 10, verse 29 to 31, where Jesus said, Are not two sparrows sold for a penny, yet not one of them will fall to the ground outside of your father's care. And even the very hairs of your head are numbered. So don't be afraid. You are worth more than many sparrows. And there are countless other scriptures that you can apply when you're feeling anxious and you can ask the Holy Spirit to let those truths, just not read them, but go deep into your heart. Here's another example, one more example. It's Mother's Day today. I know there are a lot of parents out there and they're doing it tough. They, It's hard to be a parent in this day and age. It's probably always been hard, but I think there is a lot more pressures these days. But the Holy Spirit wants to help you. And there are so many scriptures to encourage you, to give you insights and wisdom how to be the best parent you can be from feeding a baby to to helping a teenager walk through life you know the scripture that comes to mind is philippians 4 13 i can do all this through him who gives me strength i know from that scripture that jesus wants to give me strength to be the best parent i can be and he will help me practically how to do that these are just three examples of how we take the word of God. We ask Holy Spirit to reveal it to our hearts and then we apply it to our lives. And this just makes all the difference. And this is getting out of that boat. You know, a boat is just a rut. It's a rut in the road. It's the, the repeated thinking thoughts of the same thing. I'm just in my boat. I can't get out. I know Jesus is out there somewhere, but I, I just don't know. Jesus says, come. He just says, come. He says, trust me. Take that trust to a whole new level because I will never let you down. Today, I want to encourage you. Stop letting other people decide your life. Stop letting circumstances dictate what your day is going to be like. Get out of your boat. Get out of your rut and, and answer the call for Jesus 
when he says come and trust him take him to a, go to a whole new level just start small steps you know the first challenge of monday morning just stop and think i trust you jesus help me in this situation and then move on to the next one and the next one and before long it'll just become a habit and your trust will grow and you will go to a whole new level with him so right now i just want to pray and i'm going to pray for you that you will get a revelation about how jesus is saying come come trust me more whether you've known him a long time or a short time that you would just learn afresh to apply his word to increase that trust in your life. Let's pray. Lord Jesus, I thank you that you are with me. I thank you that I can trust you. Lord, I pray for everyone listening and myself too, that we will not stay in our boats, that, that we will step out of the boat and answer that call like Peter did. Lord, I thank you that when we stumble, when we fall, when we, we start to sink, that you are right there with us and your hand reaches and pulls us out of the depths. Thank you, Lord, that you are trustworthy. We know who you are. We know that. And I just pray that over every single person today. In Jesus' name, amen. Oh, my goodness. What an amazing word we've heard from Pastor Melissa this morning. And, you know, that same invitation that Jesus gave Peter, in a sense, is the invitation that Jesus bids you and me to today. Can you hear him say deep into your spirit, come, come, my child, come into all that I've prepared for you. You know, the, the best way for us to come to Jesus is humbly and with faith. You might not completely understand all that God has done for you through his son, the Lord Jesus. But right now, if there's that sense of anticipation in your heart, it's like the, the God himself is knocking on the door of your heart. Well, that's the Holy Spirit. And if you've never committed your life to Jesus, or if you've been away for, from Jesus and you know this morning that you need to make a recommitment to him, I it would be my privilege and my honour to lead you to do that. You know, all we need to do is accept what Christ has done for us. Believe with our heart that we can be saved and see, confess he is our Lord and our Saviour. And we cross from death, to life. This morning, would you do me the honour of praying with you that prayer of commitment that changes everything? Let's pray together. Lord Jesus, I acknowledge today my need of you. Lord, I've lived my life independent of your word and your spirit. Today, I ask that you would forgive me of my sin. I repent. I turn from my old life and I turn toward you. I confess that you are Lord and you are Saviour. And Jesus, you're the only name that I can claim by which I can be saved. And so, Jesus, I say to you today, you are mine and I am yours. From this moment forward, I make the choice to follow you and I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. If you prayed that with sincere faith, like Paul was applauding Timothy for his sincere faith, well, well done and welcome into the, the kingdom of God. Welcome into the family of God. It is Pastor Melissa's and my desire that we would help you in this new decision that you've made called the Christian life. And so would you please do us a favour this morning at the bottom of the screen of the details of filling in an online connect card. On that card, just let us know that you made a decision to accept Christ as your Lord and Saviour. If you need a Bible, let us know. If there's something else you need, let us know because our, our desire 
is for you to grow in your newfound faith. If I might say, I think a great thing would be come join us live for our Sunday morning services. And why don't you join Faith Essentials coming up on the 30th of May for those next uh, four weeks? Well, it has been wonderful to be uh, online with you today. If you have the great joy of being able to see your mum or talk to your mum today, I hope that that's blessed. Uh, if you're remembering your mum, well, I, I pray that the Lord would comfort you, particularly for those who might have lost their mums. I'm, I'm believing that this week you're going to be blessed. And as, Ma, as Pastor Melissa said, Jesus is saying, come, come. Let's listen for his voice in the week ahead. Hey, God bless. Thanks for joining us. We will see you live or online next Sunday.